Good morning guys. <laughs> another weekend, another DIY project. So this weekend we are going to be working on, finally, the extractor hood. So the two weekends ago I tiled... I was, was going to say, how many times have you recorded that oh, and not used it now? Don't even start. <laughs> so a couple of weekends ago I tiled Backsplash. We intended to start this um, cooker hood project a lot sooner, but we've had a lot of really annoying setbacks. Basically, first one, I ordered the wrong extractor hood. I ordered one that was too small. It's too late to return it. That's a bit annoying. Second, I ordered a refurbished one. The screws on it were completely messed up, had to return it. I ordered the same one again, but a new version and same issue. The screws were completely messed up. So we have ordered our fourth cooker hood. <laughs> so fourth time's a charm, I guess, but we're gonna basically, I'll put in some inspo photos of what we wanna do. I've spoken about this briefly before, but we wanna do like a really cool boxed in concealed cooker hood situation. And obviously I've said before that we wanna do some like cute open shelving on either side. So we just want it to be really simple, really clean. I've never built anything like this before. So I've watched a couple of tutorials, a couple of videos. Um, I feel like I'm ready, I'm ready to do it. Before we get started on actually building stuff, we have a couple of things to do. We're gonna go pick up a dining bench, a Facebook Marketplace find dining bench. So we're gonna go pick that up. We're gonna stop off at B&Q, get our supplies, come back, crack on. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. Um, what I haven't said to you yet. Oh no, that's is, horror. No, I, I'm, basically we're gonna build a frame and I'll explain this later, and then we're gonna clad it with MDF. I'm thinking that we get the stuff for the frame, build the frame, then measure up and then get the MDF, but get B&Q to cut it. Yeah. So it's gonna be two trips to B&Q, but fine. no cutting for us. So yeah. that's my kind of plan of action. Um, but yeah, we're gonna quickly have a bit of breakfast, go do our little errands, and then we'll crack on with Project Cookerhood. So once we grabbed our Facebook Marketplace find, we popped to B&Q to get all the wood to do the frame for the cooker hood. We also stopped off to do a cheeky little coffee run because coffee is fuel. And on the way back, we got stuck behind a ridiculously slow tractor. Once we got home, I grabbed my nifty camping table and took it into the garden to get it all set up to do all of our cuts. Steve also bought the big saw around the side, not through the house this time because it was very, very dusty. So he brought it around um, the side of the garden. Okay, so this is the extractor that we've gone for. It's from this brand, Cookology. Um, so hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Basically has these little tab things. So we need to kind of build a frame, slot this up. It will catch on the tabs. And then I think you screw it in in the back there um, to make sure it's all secure. The reason I went for this one is it kind of has this like glass front. So it looks quite nice. And the reason for that is because if you guys saw my tiling video, you'll know that we did the tiles 90 centimeters high. And obviously you'll see like a decent amount of the underside of the extractor hood. So we basically wanted to make sure that if you're gonna see it, that it was gonna look nice. There is this kind of little hatch door, it's magnetic so that you can sort of access the, I don't know what you call that, the panel. Um, but yeah, I'm basically, we're all set up outside. Um, we've got our saw, got all the wood out there. I'm gonna just make sure, like double measure everything, make sure it's all good, build the frame, get the frame on the wall, and then install the cooker hood. Hopefully, simples. So I just started off by kind of scribbling out exactly what I wanted to build and just measuring out the cooker hood and making sure I had all of my measurements. Milo was definitely in a very helpful mood that day. But yeah, I basically just measured each side of the cooker hood and tried to write it down and make sense of what was in my brain. So just to show you guys what was in my head, I was looking at building this rectangular frame. I would build one for the bottom for the cooker hood to attach to, and also one on the top as well. And then I would attach the two of them with kind of vertical supports as well. 
and then this whole thing will just attach to the wall in theory. So I decided to start off by just doing that kind of bottom rectangular frame at first. We took all of our wood outside. This is very much like rinse repeat guys. I marked out my measurements on the wood and put it through my circular saw. So I did two cuts for the long lengths and then two cuts for the kind of shorter lengths as well. So once I'd made all of my cuts, I bought them inside. I also grabbed some of these corner clamps from Amazon. These were so, so helpful. I just put my frame together using these corner brackets and they help get a perfect right angle. And they also just help hold them in place later on for when you're gonna kind of screw them together. So once all my brackets were on, this is what the frame was looking like. I then grabbed my Ryobi drill and I put a teeny, teeny, tiny drill bit on it. And all I'm doing is just drilling pilot holes ready for when we screw it together. This will help prevent the wood from splitting. And I'm just using general purpose screws for this. Very simple, you just screw it all together and then take the brackets off. Yeah, baby! Let's go, babe. Well <laughs> Woo! Babe, I have done it wrong. Huh? I have done it wrong. How? I've got my measurements correct, but I screwed it together wrong. Oh, right. Yeah, I'd have to unscrew it and then, like, re-screw it back together, I guess. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's just like... I've got to wait for my bloody Ryobi batteries to charge up. Yeah, let's have lunch. So after realizing we had a couple of little issues, we went back to the drawing board and also went back to B&Q to pick up some more supplies. We picked up a missing piece of material that we needed and also the cladding to do the exterior of the cooker hood as well. So we've just gotten back from our second B&Q trip of the day. I've got to explain this because, yeah, it's a bit confusing. So built that frame, put it over the cooker hood. But, so basically when you install the cooker hood, excuse me, doggies, you're meant to be able to push the cooker hood in and then it has these little clips that spring up and hold it in place and you can tighten them. I measured it when the clips were out like this but I should have measured it when they were in like this because basically there is not enough room for it to spring out and hold it in place. So I had to go back to the drawing board a little bit and basically I'm still going to use that bit of the frame at the top here. So it's going to be like a rectangle frame. I'm going to do some struts going down, but then instead of having another frame here, 
I'm gonna attach it to a piece of MDF. So this is 12 mil MDF, so I just have to cut a hole in the middle of this and attach it to the bottom of the frame. And then that is thin enough for it to go over. This is actually meant to be installed in like a cabinet, like a wall cabinet. So that is why, yeah, it won't clip into a frame like that. A little bit frustrating, but uh, I think we've got everything that we need to now. So basically plan of action is I need to cut a hole in this big enough to fit that in. I then need to attach it to the rest of the frame. Um, and I also got the bits cut to do like the cladding around it, which might be a job for tomorrow. But we're gonna see, I've had some setbacks. We're gonna see if we can get this at least on the wall today, hopefully. And also my stud finder's not working. So yay, I have no idea where the studs are. I might have to do a couple of test holes and just see. To start with, I just measured out the exact size that I needed to cut out from the middle of this piece of wood. It's pretty handy that the instructions actually tell you how big of a hole you need to cut for the cooker to fit in. But once I'd made my measurements, drawn out the box I needed to cut out, I then took it outside and cut it with my little mini handheld circular saw. One tip if you are making a cut like this, I like to use a drill to drill holes in the corners. It makes it a lot easier to kind of cut the shape out then. So at this point you can see I have my frame that I built for the top of the cooker hood and also my piece of MDF ready for the bottom of the cooker hood. Now we're just attaching the vertical supports into it. So I just drill a little pilot hole and then use my multi-purpose screws to attach them together as well. Once it was ready to go up, I used my laser level, got Steve to kind of hold it there, and I just double checked measurements and everything before I drilled holes. So I'm drilling through the frame into the wall and also into the ceiling. We are using special wall plugs for this, which are for plasterboard to make sure that it will be sturdy and more than enough to hold the weight of the extractor hood once it's up. Good morning guys. So this is where we are with the project so far. We had to call it a day last night because we were we had plans we were going out so we kind of just couldn't crack on and get it all done. Basically I had hoped to actually get the frame installed but we ran out of time because we didn't have screws that were long enough. Um, but basically what we've done so far is we've drilled the holes 
and put in um special like wall anchors into the wall um but the screws that we had were like just a little bit too short so steve went and grabbed the screws last night um he's about to come from the back from the gym every, any moment now but we're gonna get it up installed hopefully it won't take too long it should be like screwing all the screws in um yeah and then we can install the cooker hood i'm not gonna lie like i had the worst night's sleep i just had like loads of nightmares about like the, we were installing the cooker hood, it had fallen down, it ripped like the plasterboard away, it, it broke all the tiles. Like I always have this irrational fear of stuff just literally gonna fall apart. I had the same dream about like flooring, that all the flooring just like broke and came up and stuff. So if you think this stuff is like really easy and I just crack on with it, I definitely have a lot of like, oh my God, what if it breaks sort of moments. Um, and this project in particular has been probably one of the most frustrating ones I've worked on, just because nothing seems to be going to plan. And there have been moments where I'm like, F this, let's just call someone in to do it for us. But we're so nearly there, I just want like power on and get it done. And hopefully it all turns out all right. Um, but yeah, I will obviously take you guys along with what we're up to today. So the day before we had already installed all of our wall plugs so it was just a case of getting it up on the wall lined up again and just screwing all of the screws in then once it was up we were able to just slot the extractor hood in tighten up the screws that were on the extractor hood and it kind of just clamps into place So time to add the cladding onto this frame. So we are just using the thinnest MDF sheet that we could find. For the front panel, I actually got them to cut it to size at B&Q, but for the side panels, we had some leftover MDF, which I cut outside and I completely forgot to film it. I did a little bit of research on this and the recommended best way to install it was to use adhesive and a nail gun. So that is what I'm doing here. I've dry fit all of these prior to double check that they all fit perfectly. And all I'm doing is going in with my strong fix adhesive and my nail gun to attach it. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're wiping away any adhesive after you've installed these. But once they were up, all I had to do was just fill in any holes, all of the gaps and the joins and stuff. And once that was dry, I sanded it all back to make sure it was super smooth. Then it was on to painting. So I'm using two different paints for this project. First of all, I'm going in with the Leyland acrylic primer undercoat, and then I'm gonna move on to the Dulux Trade super matte paint, which is the same as what we put on our walls. This is also the same combo that we put on our paneling in our lounge and our dining room, and it works perfectly for their MDF. I ended up doing two coats of the primer and two coats of the Dulux matte emulsion. Sorry to my ex, you deserve more. Sorry to my ex, but I'd rather... 
Okay guys, so the cooker hood is done. Bear in mind, it does need like a couple of bits of touch ups, but like I said, we're gonna be working on the shelving. So I didn't worry about getting it absolutely perfect because I presume it's gonna get a little bit scuffed up when we try and install the shelving next to it. So let me show you what it's looking like now. We are so, so happy with how this turned out. This has probably been one of the most frustrating projects in the house just because we had so many setbacks with it. But I'm really, really happy with the way that it's turned out. It's exactly how I kind of envisaged it looking. And once the shelves are up, it's just gonna look so much better. It definitely needs like that wood kind of to warm it up basically. One of the concerns I had at the beginning was because I did the tiling so high, I was worried it was gonna look a little bit silly because it was so high. But having the hood there has just basically balanced everything out. So it's looking a lot better now that the hood is in. Can't wait to get the shelving up. Um, we are actually going to tackle that right now. It's going to be in a separate video though. So if you want to check back in and see all like the shelving and final styling and everything, then don't forget to subscribe. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I will catch you guys in the next one.